is the size where you can detect the cancer. Five years ago in Denmark, I could not talk about overdiagnosis. I could not use the word overdiagnosis. It's a whole linguistic problem, it's a cultural problem, it's a professional problem. So this conference is very, very important because we have to change the whole thinking about medicine. What you are arguing here, what is the evidence and how do you The DSM it? says it's about 5% of kids, but when you look at numbers, the number of kids being diagnosed is a heck of a lot higher than that. Those of you in the United States are familiar with racial profiling. This is pathologic profiling. What we're learning at conferences like this one is that overdiagnosis is happening across many different disease conditions, um, both cancer and non-cancer. And so I think we need a lot more research that is disease specific, but we also need research on what are the best methods to study this, what are the best ways to communicate about it, and what are the best ways to prevent it. That if you have a screening child with a fever, you can imagine a red eardrum if you need to, so that you... Overdiagnosis in the adult population has largely focused on cancer. For children, I think overdiagnosis, um, re we're really talking about diagnosis of pre-disease um, and things that label children as ill when they are not actually ill. The public should be concerned, for one, that in the state of Louisiana we spent $30 million uh, over, if we just medicated at the regular amount in America, which is an over extreme overdiagnosis in my opinion, uh, we would have saved $30 million uh, in Medicaid spending alone. I'm very thankful that the organizers of this conference in included me and included a carved out opportunity to address the perspective of healthcare journalism. It is indeed, I believe, one of the leading drivers of overdiagnosis and should not be left out of this discussion. So I'm, I'm really thrilled that we've had this opportunity. One thing that's really encouraging is this is the third meeting and the proportion of clinicians as to researchers has, has changed. So the first year was primarily researchers, but now we've got a growing number of clinicians. So these are people on the ground may, helping patients make these decisions. And we also have more patients this year. Yeah. That's something that had been missing in prior years. And yeah. I think this year it's a much more complete representation of the people who really experienced this problem. It's just fantastic to come together with people who are concerned, like me, about this issue. And um, really the coffee breaks are as good as the lectures because you get in a group with other people and you talk about issues and you always find common ground and you share ideas and contacts. And I've got so much out of this conference in terms of where the best practice is going on. And I've been approached by people who say sometimes um, the media or others come and want examples of people who have been overdiagnosed, so I've been happy to give them my email address. Where the 70 gene was being tested for feasibility. Uh, we have to be cognizant that we can inadvertently cause problems by doing too much and cause problems by not understanding that there's a spectrum in any disease some of which is going to grow very slowly or not at all and be indolent, and some of which might be very aggressive. And we have to tailor our treatments and interventions and our screening approaches with the understanding that that's what's underneath it for every condition. What it does is it first helps us understand the need to educate ourselves and the public and to educate the rest of the profession in this problem. The well-meaning screening advocates, they have a distinct advantage. It's a wonderful story, and we love it. Early detection saved my life. We have to look at strategies to better explain the risks of overdiagnosis, and we have to recognize that we have two audiences, three if you put in politicians, right? We have to take on our own clinicians, and we have to help the public not to make decisions that it's bad, but at least to get to the point where we're making informed decisions. It's amazing that all over the world, you know, in environments that are very different, you know, places that are resource poor, and places that are, 
you know, full of resources, are still struggling with these issues on the ground. And the idea about how to figure out how to deal with these in more constructive ways is something that people who want to make the world a little bit better really care about. And I think that's really fun, being a part of trying to solve these really challenging problems. You know, the Preventing Overdiagnosis Conference is incredibly important because it's helping uh, people in medicine to understand that this is a real issue and a real problem. Uh, and I think as medicine and people in medicine understand this is a problem, it will spread to the lay public as well. And perhaps we'll be able to deal with this issue a little bit uh, better than we have in the past.